Hey pals, how are you? I'm doing well. I am working on a needlepoint. No, I'm not. I'm not doing the needlepoint. I'm stretching it. I'm pinning it. I've, it's already been blocked. Isn't it pretty? That's why I'm blocking this baby. And I figured I'd check in, say hello. See how your week is going. Today is Wednesday already. I just, I can't even, I don't know where the week went. I, can you see, do I look like a weirdo talking to you while I'm doing this? I am working also, not while I'm doing this, but I am working on a video for you guys. For anyone who cross stitches, um, a few months ago, I was a guest on the Floss Toss channel with Sue and Rachel, and they had, we did a giveaway, so two videos that have to do with them. Uh, the first one that I'm working on is answering all of the cross stitch, framing cross stitch questions that their viewers had put in their comments, um, that video. So I'm working on that video. And then I'm also will begin work on a video with the winner of the giveaway on their channel when I was a guest, which is really cool because their viewer, Katie, hi Katie, uh, she said yes to making a video with me. So I will be walking her through the process of picking out the framing components for her cross stitch. Maybe it's just a frame or maybe it's a frame and matting. So that'll be fun. This will be her first time getting anything professionally framed. So I'm excited to help her with that. So stay tuned for those videos. Katie's video probably won't be up until, I'm going to guess, November-ish, uh, but the question and answer video will be up before Halloween. So that's pretty fun. Later on in the video, I have a fun framing project to share with you. I just finished filming that. Yeah, that's what I'm up to. There's other things to share, but I'll let that be a surprise. <laughs> anyway, thanks for being here. I didn't say who I was, did I? I'm Paige, and this is Framing Fiber. Thanks for being here. Checking on chickens. Would you like to see some chickens? Okay. Hey, girls. How's it going? Dan? Guys, you should have seen Danny like three weeks ago. No, uh, two weeks ago. Her feathers are growing in quickly. She was, see her butt? It was completely bare. The other girls haven't really been molting, so I don't know. I thought they would all go at one time, but. I guess not. All right, let's see. If there's anything in here for us? Two eggs. Do you guys like my bucket of rocks? <laughs> when I'm doing my chicken chores, I'm cleaning up the chicken yard. I try to catch or catch. I catch rocks. I rake up rocks and I fill that bucket. And blue is so flipping loud. Now you're quiet. It's dark. Hey, Rocket. Hey, Red. 
I did. All right then, girls, carry on. So I have a lot of herbs to dry. I think my first frost is in a little over two weeks. So I have two weeks to get my herbs dried. This is pineapple sage. I'm letting it go to flower. I would like to dry this. I'm thinking I can use this for tea in the winter. I don't know, I've never used it dry. I've only used it fresh. A bunch of thyme down there. I have good old oregano, which is this right here. All that is rosemary. Behind it is lavender. I've got some sage. So that all has to be dried. I have to feed the marigolds to the chickens. See all of these, like those are weeds. Those are not baby plants, but this was all baby plants. It was all eaten by losers. Do I have, I have some beans, so these are drying. So those will be a couple weeks. Those are almost ready. That one's almost ready. My carrots are looking good. Oh, they left me some lettuce. Boxes are pretty good, so I'll have some lettuces there. So I'm gonna pick some herbs and put them in the dehydrator. That is what I'm gonna do. Let me add my eggies. <laughs> I love that little thing. Let's do some Italian oregano tonight. Some of this went to seed. I think I can still use it though. I feel like oregano is one of those like could be completely wrong. It smells so good. <laughs> There's still a lot left. I think that's good for tonight. It's probably more than what I can fit in the dehydrator. That's a pretty big amount <laughs> of oregano. I'm glad I cut it. Let me weigh it. Okay. All right, so how much oregano do I have? All right, so that's seven ounces. That's a lot. That is a lot. Okay, so I just remeasured and or reweighed my herbs, and that's holding about three ounces, a little bit less than three ounces. So Half of what I picked tonight is in there, so what I'll do is I'll let this go probably till, what time is it? It's seven, so I'll let this go till bedtime, and then in the morning I'll switch it out for the rest of the stuff. So, I don't think it's so bad. It smells so good in my house. Okay, herbs are dehydrating. I just made my dinner. It's a smoothie. It has... Yellow squash, beets, kale, strawberries, but really I wanted it to be cherries, but I ran out of cherries. Cashews, and before you say, oh, you're so healthy, I mix it all together with chocolate almond milk. <laughs> it's quite tasty. I know it sounds weird, but most of those things you can't taste. And usually with cherries, the beets aren't so bad, so We'll see how it is with strawberries, but cheers, bon appetit. <laughs> Paul Miller is making wok corn. It's just popcorn that he makes in his wok. Right, Bubs? Walker corn? No. <laughs> what, did you drop some kernels? Yeah. 
and Smugly the cat, aka Bud, is snuggling on my neck. Morning, pals. Breakfast. Sometimes when you're not in the mood to make a big mess, you use Deli Harvest. It's delish. Mm. I wanted to show you my herbs. <clears throat> Let's see. Do you hear that? That's a Jersey Giant chicken. I think that the name Jersey Giant, which is, these are old chickens. I feel like Jersey Giants were like, you know, I don't want to say heirloom, but heritage breed chickens. So they've been around for a really long time. But I think it's pretty funny that my loudest chickens have Jersey in their name. I went to bed last night and forgot to unplug this. So they were dehydrated. That's all right, bud. So I fell asleep, so these were dehydrating, but you know what? They're like super awesome dehydrated. So, so I dumped them out of my tray onto my kitchen towel or tea towel, whatever you want to call it. And then I will just fold up the towel and give it a good crunch, crunch, crunch. And then I'll get rid of the stems and put all of the tiny bits and bobs into a jar and they'll go over here. So that's the Italian oregano. I still have this Italian oregano. And then we have a massive amount, massive amount of Greek oregano. Oh, thanks, Amy. Oh, hi, Blue. Coming in? Of course, because I'm making it nice and neat. You like to come in, that's me. How's it going? Could you, like, go away? I have to... Blue. Move it. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's it. You're such a loud chicken. Buff. Taking care of the eggies. You're such a good girl. Loud chicken. Blue is always in the middle of things. And so is Buffy. Oh, you wanted. You wanted love. Aw, you running away? Chicken baby. <laughs> There's Buff. She's a sweetheart, even though she pecks my legs. Okay, so I'm gonna go rake the yard now. Y'all wanna see something gross? <laughs> this is the part of having farm animals, which is not so fun, because it's nasty. Okay, if you're squeamish, look away. It's called the big egg fly trap. And that thing is full of flies. From here to about there. It's so disgusting. 
Miller and I think since we started using these bags, ew, we think we've attracted all the flies from all of our neighbor's yards too. <laughs> Uh, this will be the last bag that we use for the season. We only use it during the hot summer. Um, my Acusa dogwood, which is, can you see it? It's that one right there. It drops red berries. The red berries are really sweet. All the animals are drawn to them. But when they start to decompose, they have that... Rocket, stop pecking my leg. Uh, they have that sweet fermented smell. Have you ever smelled like decomposing apples? It kind of smells like that. That smell has the flies going nuts. So we actually had to use that because of the fruit. So that's something to learn for next year. Those berries have to be raked up and buried. Once everything's buried, there's no fly issue, which is why in the summer I rake this yard once or twice a day. It takes me literally five minutes, maybe 10 minutes <laughs> to do all of my chicken chores out here. And I rake up all the poops and then I just bury them. Once they're buried, there's no fly issue. But look at these pretties. Oh, do you see the sun just shining down on them? Do I have pockets? Yes. I'm putting eggs in my pockets. I haven't had this happen yet, knock on wood, uh, but there's something called a pocket omelet, and that's when you check your chicken coop, and you put your eggs in your pocket, and then you forget they're in your pocket, and you go about your business, and squat. <laughs> I've not had one. I don't think Paul Miller has yet, either. I have, however, dropped lots of eggs. Okay, girls, I'll see y'all when I get home from work. I'll see you guys at work. I just finished up recording with Katie, who was the winner of the Floss Toss giveaway. I have two friends, Sue and Rachel, who host Floss Toss on YouTube and their channel has been just growing and people love watching them go visit them. So we did a giveaway for, I think it was, they reached 3,000 subscribers on YouTube. Katie won the giveaway and she did this cross stitch right here. I'm not gonna show you guys what she picked out. She and I met on Zoom and picked out all of the framing components and recorded the process. So that'll be a video here pretty soon. It was really fun to do with someone who, one, is new to cross stitch, two, has never had anything framed before, and it's just always fun to meet somebody new, especially someone who is obsessed with knitting and cross stitching. That's right up my alley. <laughs> all right, so that was fun. Um, is that all I have to tell you about it? Yeah, I just wanted to fill you in, let you know what I'm up to. Did you see my dress? Was that squirrel, like the way I changed? Also, my hair is falling out. I got to fix that. All right. Um, I've got the cutest dress on today. I love it. All right. Let me clean up this mess from recording and get in the back and continue picture framing. Today is Transformation Tuesday, although it's Friday. <laughs> Have you ever guys ever noticed how much I crack myself up? <laughs> oh my goodness, I think I'm so funny. Okay, let me put this here. I wanna show you what I'm gonna be starting. This is for a lovely customer who is also a YouTube viewer, and that thing is not correct. Hold on, let me fix this and I'll get back to you. Okay, that's better. All right, so, oh, <laughs> we don't need to see her last name. All right, it's just in this unfinished frame with just a paper cutout mat. But what's cool about this is it's made out of leaves. Let's see. 
I want those cool textures. They're all different kinds of leaves and grasses. Very neat. And luckily, they only taped it onto the edge or taped the back to the mat so I can get that off fairly easy. All right, so busted old framing. Let me show you the new framing. Okay, pals, do you know how satisfying it is to take the artwork off of the mat? I love it. <laughs> so satisfying. So I'm just going to show you guys what I do really quick with artwork when I am taking it off a mat and putting it onto a new mat. This is my favorite tape for just a standard hinge. It's an acid-free tape. Also, it's pretty satisfying to burnish down these little hinges. So first I attach it to the artwork. Then I position it uh, in its mat. I use my little weights. They're just leather pouches with beans in them. And I hinge it down to the backer board. We tape it to the backer board rather than to the window mat. It's much more stable and secure for the artwork. Instead of putting it on the window mat where then it's more likely to move around. And then I throw the glass on. Well, okay, I don't throw it on. So there you have it. It's a pretty big improvement. I hope Andy likes it. Thanks for watching.